Hey, it's Diane Lee from Teach Pre-K and I am in my home office and I want to talk to you guys about Thanksgiving literacy activities. Um, I have a blog post about this and I will put a link to my blog post and to my Thanksgiving lesson plan where you can find most of these activities as well if you are interested. But I am going to first show you. I believe that print all over my room is super important with pictures that relate to the print. It just kind of gets the kids used to the fact that the world is full of print, that words is important, that reading is important, that words and pictures relate a lot of times because we're all reading picture, picture books at this point. And, you know, it's just a great, just a great thing to have, a good thing to have in your environment. I have an alphabet wall that has a generic alphabet most of the year for Thanksgiving and holidays and for certain other themes, I cover the generic alphabet with an alphabet pertaining to the holiday or the theme that we're doing. I have a Thanksgiving alphabet with Thanksgiving words A to Z. So a lot of the pictures um, that I'm going to show you in my pocket chart words and my posters are already on my alphabet wall too. So the kids have these pictures and these words are being fired at them left and right all during my Thanksgiving unit. So they learn a lot of vocabulary and they just see a lot of Thanksgiving words in print. So these are my uh, pocket chart word strips. So I've got the Native Americans, the Mayflower. We have dinner on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's about sharing. This is a cornucopia. I don't think I ever put this one up. Cornucopias are weird. Kids don't know what they are. Uh, food. Mm, pumpkin pie. We all love pumpkin pie. Love because it's a time that we spend with our family. Here's family turkey and on and on like that. I also have corresponding posters that I put up on a bulletin board, kind of adding a Thanksgiving feel to the class with the alphabet wall with the pocket chart words. And then I have, you know, Thanksgiving is family. Thanksgiving is fun. Thanksgiving is love. Same picture as the pocket chart word. Thanksgiving is dinner with that huge family, Mayflower, etc. So all these things are up where the kids can see them. And so that is part of of my Thanksgiving literacy strategy, just a part. Um, I'm gonna show you some activities that I do with my classes. I have some rhyming cards. I don't do rhyming with my preschoolers. We read rhyming books. We say, hey, those words sound the same, that's a rhyme. I don't really do rhyming activities with them. Most of them are not ready for it. But I have a little rhyme and match cards. So I've got like ham, yam, try to keep like some Thanksgiving theme going, beans, jeans. But what we usually do with this is I put one set of the words down in an array and then they get, like they draw a card. So if they draw ham, they flip the cards over until they find something that rhymes with it. Yeah. So we do that until we're done. And this deck is not very big. So there's just a few and we just talk about what words rhyme and we ask, oh, do you know any other words that rhyme with ham and yam? Sure, you know, jam, things like that. Um, this is a favorite game. Oh my gosh, you guys, kids love this game so much. This is turkey and straw, can you find the turkey? So I have these little turkeys and I usually have three or four because I'm gonna have a group of three or four kids in my small group center. I have haystacks or my straw with both uppercase letters and with lowercase letters and I just choose what I'm going to do. For my three-year-olds, I use the uppercase letters in their names, first letter of their names, and the ones we've already gone through this year, I do letter of the week. So at this point, we've done maybe 10 or 11 letters. So I just choose those letters because those are letters they should know, they have been exposed to. They might not know them, that's okay. It's a way for me to review with them. And also for me to see the ones that they remember. So what I do is I put those out in an array and these turkeys are sized to hide under the haystacks. So they turn around, I hide the turkeys, they turn back around, they cannot touch these. They have to tell me what letter it's under, letter recognition. If they can't, they point to it and I go, oh, that's an A. So then I'm giving up them the review. I flip it over and holy smokes, the turkey's there. If they get the turkey, they're done and they just watch the other kids play until everybody gets one turkey. Otherwise, if somebody gets all their turkeys, it's miserable, you guys. Try to make it so they all get a turkey. 
So they turn around again, we play it again, I might bring out other letters. I'll probably do like 10 or 12 letters at a time with my pre-K, um, and I'll probably do eight to 10 with my preschool, kind of gauge how they're doing with it. And then if there's more letters for me to bring out, we'll do, we'll do another, another round. They could play this forever, you guys. They love this game. So this is Turkey in the Straw. And actually, we're going to play that the first Monday of my Thanksgiving unit. Because I know it'll kick it off with something really fun. And I think I offered this for free on my website a little while ago. So another fun activity that I have, and this is in my lesson plan, are these little uh, alphabet puzzles. They just go together like so. These are, uh, I printed these on cardstock and I laminated them on five millimeter um, uh, laminating pouches. So they're a little thicker, so they stay together better. But I have the same pictures and words as my alphabet wall, my Thanksgiving alphabet on these. So I'm using the alphabet. So that was C for corn. And here I have B for boat for the Mayflower. So there we go. So they've got A through Z of those. That's another fun center, or it's something I could put out as the kids arrive that they can do, because they know how to do it. Um, one of my favorite, it's kind of an art slash literacy activity, is we make a handprint turkey card for their family. And I have a template for this in my lesson plan. Happy Thanksgiving. We paint their hand with their fingers different colors. When it's dry, they can add the eye and they draw the beak and the waddle and the feet. Um, I ask them what you want to say to your family for Thanksgiving. This is a card for your family. So this is, I am thankful for my mommy and daddy. I love you. And then Max practiced writing his name right there. They can't write their name at all. You let them practice and then, so you know whose it is, you can write their name down there and then send that home before Thanksgiving. Um, I also love these little foldable books that I have created. This one is Pilgrims. They get it flat like this and they can color it and then you fold it into a little book. And it says, Pilgrims sail to America. Pilgrims landed at Pil Plymouth Rock. Pilgrims made new friends. Pilgrims shared food with their friends. So there's the story of the first Thanksgiving in a little foldable kind of emergent reader. Um, I also make a stack of, uh, sorry, I'm opening all these black bags, of matching cards. And we do this kind of like we did that rhyming game where I'll lay out an array of one side of the match and they draw a card, and let's say this one is visiting, they'll turn the cards over until they find visiting. Or I'll do it like a traditional memory game if I think the class is ready for that, where I'll just pick a few of the matches and I'll put them in a little array and we flip them over and we try to remember where they are. Um, I've done this in the past. Some of my pre-K classes have been ready to do a memory game that way. Some of them haven't you can get really frustrated and it, it can kind of blow up in your face if the kids aren't ready. So find the best way to do this little vocabulary matching games so that you're not frustrated and the kids aren't frustrated. Another little thing that I like is this little letter hunt game. I have got it in uppercase and lowercase letters. The letters are on this little pumpkin and it says mark the letter. I always tell the kids they're letter detectives and they need to find the letters. Um, we use a dauber to mark the letter and we have decks of, and I'm just going to keep these in this baggie for you, of uppercase and lowercase letters. We put those face down, we flip them up. This one is lowercase r. You find your lowercase r, you mark it with your dauber. If I want to challenge my pre-K, I do the lowercase cards with uppercase pumpkins or vice versa. I have the cards in uppercase too. So you can do a straight match, uppercase to uppercase, lowercase to lowercase, whatever you want to work on. And you don't have to do the whole alphabet. Just pick the letters that you've learned and the first letters of their name. That's always a good way to go. And then you can use the uppercase cards, the letter cards that I showed you before. These are in my lesson plan and they come in both upper and lower case or the lower case. So you've got some options. You can challenge your kids or you can make it just like a good review. This is not in my lesson plan, but there's a book 
called Who Will Carve the Turkey This Thanksgiving? And I made a journal page. And I made, found this cute turkey border. I think it's from Educlips. And they can put their name. We write the date because we put these in our literacy journals. And it says, Who Will Carve Your Thanksgiving Turkey This Year? In the book, there's like a saber tooth tiger, shark, you know, a polar bear, all these crazy things. Um, and most of them do. My daddy, my mom, my grandpa, it's really cute. Or they can use their imagination and like porcupines can carve my turkey. And they try to draw a picture of whatever it is that they're thinking. And then it's really cute. Um, this is a super fun uh, game. It's called Then and Now. So it's talking about things that they used maybe during pilgrim times or older times and now. So I have these mats. One is then, one is now. I set these out and there are these cards. Like this is a stove, stove and an oven that we would use now. But there's also, let me find it, you know, an example of cooking in a fireplace. Um, there is, oh, slate and chalk. Oh my gosh, I showed that to you guys upside down. Slate and chalk. And then I think here I have like, you can use a pen. I think I have paper in here too. There's like a pilgrim dress. And just, you know, like a cute modern dress that we would wear now. So you can talk about... Like there's an old telephone and a picture of like what an iPhone and stuff. Um, this is in my all about Thanksgiving lesson plan and teachers pay teachers too. But it's just a fun activity for them to think like, oh my gosh, things weren't always the way they are. Um, this I don't think is in my lesson plan. I just made it up for fun. I love the, I know in old lady books, I actually have the old lady with the open mouth and she's not very cute. I'm kind of hoping someone will come out with a cute old lady. So in this, I know an old lady who swallowed a turkey. Um, it ends up that everything she swallows turns into like a Thanksgiving day parade float. So there's like a football, pilgrim hat, cornucopia, a balloon, of course the turkey, and they all take the boat wheels they all take turns putting these in the little old lady's mouth. I pass them out to a small group. They each get probably two. And as I read their item, they stuff it in the old lady's mouth. Oh my gosh, this never fails. This is like the best center. They always love it. You would think they would get sick of it. They don't. I think I have, I know an old lady does everything. Um, and last but not least, we have vocabulary bingo. And this one... Most of my bingo games, they're all the same. This one, they all have a variable, so they're not all the exact same. So you've got these little Thanksgiving dinner bingo, and we've got the cards. We draw the cards, and um, they cover them with these awesome clear buttons because then we can see, like, oh, we got gravy. You covered gravy. I can make sure the kids are covering the right thing. And then we can check it against the cards when they yell bingo. It's... It's pretty cute. It's very small. It's just 12 spots. There's no free spot. And once somebody wins, we always go on to blackout and other people win along the way or win or get bingo. And they love it. So those are a few of my favorite literacy activities. So all of these are in my lesson plan. Some of them aren't. If I said they're not, they're not. But I will put a link in my description and also a link to my blog post that has most of these activities as well if you want some further information and whatever. But I'll show you what the cover looks like. This is what the cover looks like. All about Thanksgiving, five-day lesson plan. Thanks for listening and have a really happy Thanksgiving.